So to set up a network connection, we're going to need a layer 4 protocol. Those are the ones that actually have the concept of connections. And we can use TCP, UDP, or other protocols to set up these connections. TCP is the most popular right now. It is reliable over long distances. It also has corrective mechanisms in case the packets get in the wrong order or they show up uh, late and so the computer has to have a mechanism for asking for the same packet over again. All of these kind of features make TCP more reliable for applications that are sensitive to any of the data getting lost. Like if you got part of your web page um, that may be a problem for you. Like if part of the form showed up or part of the functionality showed up, you think about a web page or think about a file transfer, that would actually break the process because you need all the data usually for a file to be what it was or you need all of the form transmission to actually have your form submission on your internet site to work. If part of the data is missing, then it may have consequences, you know, when the app, when the application processes that data. UDP, on the other hand, is these fire and forget connections, and they're very useful when losing a little bit of the data is not really a problem, because you don't have all that overhead of having to keep track of the packets and stuff. Video and audio are common examples. I suppose UDP might not even be terrible necessarily for transmitting just regular pictures. Sure, you may not necessarily get the same PNG that your friend intended for you to receive, but if it's missing a couple of bytes here or there, you know, who's really going to notice? So some of the uh, definitions that we'll use here in this section. All right, so programs are just computer instructions that can be executed, and processes are actually running instances of those programs. So you spin up a program into a process and you execute it, that's the process. Services are special processes. All the processes are running on the operating system, but some processes actually get the privilege of using the network card to listen for packets to come in across the network. And so whenever we take a process and we assign a port to it, an operating system port, and then we let that program interact on the network interface, we're going to call those network services. And the ports are just the number that the operating system assigns to that program so that when data shows up out of the blue, the operating system knows which of the processes to give that data to. And we'll say that open ports have a listening service, meaning there's a process that's bound to that port number and it's actually sitting there waiting for someone to talk to it. And we'll say closed ports are ones that don't have a listening service. That could be for a variety of reasons. The operating system never assigned a process. A firewall is blocking the communications. There's a failure in the network somewhere, and the packets can't get to the destination. But we'll just call those closed ports generically. So I'll start with UDP. This one is conceptually fairly straightforward. And it's a best effort connection. Good stuff. And the uh, it's lightweight. It's, it's actually more reliable than I think people give it credit for because it's not like UDP is reinventing the wheel or anything. UDP is just traveling on top of an IP packet, which is traveling on top of probably you know, Ethernet or Wi-Fi or whatever. And uh, for the most part, networking equipment actually works pretty well most of the time. So there are outages and stuff, but they're... They're relatively rare, and there are pack there is packet loss, but it's also relatively unrare. Rare if you divide the number of packets lost into the number of packets received, it's typically a pretty low number on a decent network. Now, certainly, if you're out in the boonies or whatever, then you know you may curse your cell phone and have a different problem. But generally speaking, UDP does work halfway decent. Uh, it's not bad at all. 
Now, that being said, the packets might arrive and they might not. And if they do arrive, they may or may not be in the same order that they were transmitted in. So you have to think about that when using UDP and try to use applications that are not going to be sensitive to that sort of thing. Yes? You know those, this is a good question, you know, but, you know if those little like, Amazon buttons, new reorder tie or some of that stupid stuff, that used UDP or do you know what that actually used to transmit that data? So the question is what, what does Amazon use? Um, well, Amazon is going to typically use TCP and normally <coughs> The reason they're using that is because when you're talking about the Amazon website, you're talking about HTTP protocol, and HTTP is transmitted over TCP since it is a little bit sensitive to lost information. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you clicked on the order button to order a product, and you had to fill out a form like what you wanted, and you agreed upon a price, right, and they told you what the price was, and you agreed upon a quantity, and you submitted that to the server. So let's say that you put in a quantity of two boxes and you hit the submit button, but the TCP packet, um, one of them got lost on the way and it shifted the number over one spot and now you just ordered 20, you know, instead of two or whatever. So there are certain application protocols that are more sensitive to lost data than other application protocols. For example, Amazon offer also has UDP. So let's say that you're watching a movie. That's going to stream, and that's probably going to stream over UDP because it's a much lighter weight protocol. And if the packets show up backwards, or maybe you lose an entire packet or 12, so the screen has a little pixelation in it on the right hand bottom corner for a second, and then it goes back to the way it was you're probably not going to be overly sensitive to that. So in that case, paying the price for having TCP wasn't really worth it, and using UDP was just fine. But the, the web being um, mostly content-driven, but also can be transactional. The web does have some transactionality to it. It can be sensitive to, to loss, so you're probably better off using TCP and just paying the price. And it's not like TCP is super, super slow, but relatively speaking, it's, a, it's slower than UDP is because it's a bigger, heavier packet and um, it also does more calculations on whether the order's correct and whether everything showed up on time. And sometimes it'll ask for the sender to retransmit because something didn't show up when it, the way it was expected to. So now you sent the same packet twice and you didn't really get any more benefit out of the packet. Um, so that's kind of kind of the difference between UDP and TCP when it comes to web and web services. Is it the TCP sort of design striving for the one type of thing that's designed to guarantee that each packet gets to you? Um, the, the one guy who bent circle or designed it said if he was doing it today, he, TCP would not look like what it looks like because then, you know, you might only be able to check some on the entire data and send that over. Yeah, it just depends on the business case. And when you start to move up the protocol stack, you'll start to see that it's more and more important to understand the business problem you're trying to solve. Like as you get closer and closer to the application <coughs> layer, the, the choices you make are much more driven by the individual problem, which means they're, there's not going to be a good solution for everybody. So... But it's not bad. So this is the packet structure of the user datagram protocol, UDP. Starts out with the port being first and then the destination second. So source port, I should say, is first. You can see that the source port and the destination port together take up one row and all of our tables are, the each row is a word or 32 bits. So the source port is 16 bits and the destination port is 16 bits. And when you're looking at Wireshark or the other tools that are showing you bytes, you're going you're gonna to need two bytes to make up the port. And then the length is also 16, so you can have a decent amount of data in a, in a UDP packet. 
and then there's a checksum on every packet. And then the, the protocol doesn't actually specify, of course, that you have to carry something. None of them really do. But generally speaking, UDP is going to be carrying a higher layer protocol in it. It could be phone calls or pictures, videos, audio are very common uses for UDP packets. So there's no sequence or acknowledgement fields because we don't need them. It's not reliable connection and it's not expected to be. There's no reason to have sequence numbers to keep track of the order of packets or acknowledgement numbers to acknowledge that we actually got the packet if you don't care about the order and you don't care if the packets are wrapped. This is a very easy protocol to kind of cut your teeth on because it doesn't have very much information in the protocol itself. But it works great considering that it's only two words long. So the UDP protocol, it doesn't respond regardless of whether the packet made it or didn't make it or got lost or never got sent or got blocked or what have you. It just does not tell you what happened to the packet, success or failure. Now the application might, so the application might bother to tell you what happened, give you an error or tell you to retransmit, but that's all on the application when it comes to UDP. The UDP protocol itself is not going to do any of that work for you. So if the port's open, the application might respond back. And if the port's closed, you're probably not going to know why in most situations. You might run across a friendly firewall that'll send you back an ICMP and tell you why the packet didn't make it. It may tell you that the port is blocked. It may tell you that the port is closed, but that would be 100% on the firewall taking it upon itself to do that information for you. UDP is not the one that's telling you what happened to the packet. And this is going to have really big implications when it comes to scanning. So if you're trying to scan for UDP ports, you send a UDP packet to the port and you wait for a response. And based on the response, you're going to record whether that port is open or closed. The problem is going to be if you send the packet and the port's closed, closed on the firewall, closed on the operating system, the application didn't like the way you dressed today, whatever it is, the packet is going to get thrown in the garbage. There's not going to be a response unless you run into one of those weird corner cases like you have a friendly firewall that's trying to help you out. So if it's closed, you, you're just not going to know why it's closed. Now, if it's open, somebody grab it. If it's open, the application might respond or it might not respond. If the application responds back to you, then at least in that one circumstance, you know that the UDP port is open. If the application doesn't respond back to you, either because you sent the wrong data or it just doesn't care to respond back to you, then you don't, you don't necessarily know the port's open because you don't have any information to support that and you don't necessarily know it's closed. So if you've ever been in Nmap and you've done a UDP scan, you may get back these responses that'll say open or filtered. And it can be annoying and it doesn't know why you don't know why it's giving you that response. Well, Nmap doesn't know whether the port's open or not because it ran into one of these circumstances where it just can't tell. And it's based on how the UDP protocol works. It's not really Nmap's fault. 